A raise, a raise, a raise. Here we are at a raise. I'm so excited. I love a raise. I wish that I had had this multiplication strategy when I was in elementary school. It would have made a big difference for me learning multiplication. All right, let's get in there. So the things that we need to know about arrays is that there's some particular vocabulary words in arrays that I will tell you right now. So when we count the groups of, in this case, pizzas, are groups of whatever items going in this direction. So when we're counting the groups that are flat, that is called a row. And we can remember that if we think about a movie theater. So now that we have our picture of our movie theater, it can help us visualize how this array of pizzas is kind of like a movie theater. So this row that I've already underlined, that is not what I meant to do. This row that I've already underlined would be like this row right here, row number one. And then this row here would obviously be like row number two. And that would be this row of seats right there. Then we have row number three. And you might notice in row number three that there are some seats missing, which probably means that that's available for people who might need some different type of seating option available. So maybe they have a wheelchair or they have something um, that they need a little bit different space for them to be able to enjoy the same movie. So, very cool. Then we're going to go up here. This is row number four. And we go up a level and we see here is row number four. So, a movie theater can really help us visualize why when these... Um, when the array is being counted in these flat lines, we call them rows. And same thing here with these movie theaters. So movie theater rows, same thing up here. All right, the next one, I'm gonna change my ink color, is called a column. And columns go up and down. We can use this image here. This is actually the White House. And the White House has these columns. Oh, sorry. Let me put my drawing tool up. Right here. So here's the first column. And here is the first column. Here is the second column. Here is the second column. Here's the third, and the third, the fourth, and the fourth, and the fifth, and the fifth. So we can use these images to help us remember which direction our rows and our columns go. So I'm going to erase this screen real quick. So when you're working with an array, the simplest way to solve arrays are to first start with your rows and just circle each group. I have one, two, three, four. I have four groups. Then I'm gonna do the same thing with my columns. One, two, three, four, five. I have five columns. And as I've been telling a lot of you, my favorite thing to do is to make a little multiplication sign on the corner of my array because that helps me remember that I can now clearly see it's four times five is the equation that goes with this array. So then I would write 
four, oops, four times five. And if I knew four times five, I could just really easily put that answer or product right where it belongs here after my factors. But I'm going to show you a strategy for if you don't know uh, the multiplication answer right off the top of your head. The first strategy that I could use here is that I noticed when I was counting my row, how many was in my row. I noticed that there was one, two, three, four, five pizzas in one row. So with that understanding, I knew that I could skip count by groups of five to figure out how many I had. So I started here and I went five, 10, 15, 20. There are 20 pizzas. This next strategy is a lot like skip counting, but this one is actually a multiplication strategy that's using the distributive property of multiplication and addition to help solve and break it down into an easier number. So let me actually show you what that means. So just like last time, I'm gonna start with my understanding that there's five pizzas in one row. So that must mean I know that five plus five equals 10. So if there's five in one row, then that must mean that there's five in my second row. Because remember, multiplication is all about equal groups. So if one group has five, then the next group's gonna have five. And I know that five plus five equals 10. So then again, I'm gonna make this a little bit easier on myself and I'm gonna go, hmm, I'm noticing that in my group that I just counted, I'm noticing that I have two groups of five. And if I look above at the array that's left over, I'm seeing also that there is one group of five and there is a second group of five, which means that that top part of the array is the same amount as the bottom part that I already counted. I don't need to do that five plus five equals 10 because I already did it. So I know that this chunk also equals 10. Then I can just add these two together and bingo, 20. This strategy also got me the same answer as the last problem, or sorry, the last way that I solved this problem. The last thing that I want to show you is very, very technical, and it's that technically when we say something like 4 times 5, what we're actually saying is rows times columns. And if we look over here, it's actually rows times columns. So when we are talking about these factors, it actually does matter when we say 4 times 5 or, or 5 times 4. Those are actually different even though they both equal 20. And I'll show you really quickly why. All right, so I just drew in the first one in pink, I drew four times five, or four rows with five in each row. And in purple, I drew five times four, or five rows with four in each row. So I'm gonna give you just a moment to look at the difference between those two arrays and just see what you notice that's the same and what you notice that's different. So 
So I'm hoping that you noticed a couple of different things. I'm not sure what those things are, and yay that you noticed whatever you noticed. I'm going to point out a couple different things. So here we have the same total amount of dots. We know that 4 times 5 equals 20 because we already calculated over here. So we know that there are 20 dots right here. And if I count this group over here, it's going to have exactly the same amount of dots because 4 times 5 and 5 times 4, it's actually the same thing. You get 20 either way. But the thing that is different is that in this group, there's 5 in the row. But in purple, there's only 4 in the row. So that's one thing that's different is we have 5 in the row here. And we have four in the row here. But when we count the column here, there is four in the column. And over here, it's the opposite. It's five in the column. It's because, as we will talk about, these numbers here, um, these numbers in multiplication and addition, I mean, sorry, in multiplication and division, these numbers are tied together forever. We didn't calculate, but we know that there are 20. These numbers are tied together um, because they're a fact family. So often we write that like this for, it doesn't matter where you put them. You can put them wherever you want to, but they have to be a triangle. Because 4 times 5 equals 20. And 5 times 4 equals 20. But the same is actually true of 20 divided by 4 equals 5. And 20 divided by 5 equals 4. So all those numbers, they're just constantly going around and around and around and around and around, depending on if we're doing multiplication or if we're doing division. So all of those numbers, they're all connected and they're all going to stay connected. So that's another little hint that you can use is if you already know one of these equations and you just see it flopped, you see it reversed, you can be like, oh, pff, I already know that one. And you can just be like, boop, it's 20 because it is. Great job.